Hi, this is Dave from javacodejunkie.com and in this video we're going to talk about event handling in JavaFX. Let's create a new JavaFX project. We'll call it Event Explorer. Let's open the main.java class. And we'll start from scratch in here. Let's create some private variables. Organize the imports for those. Then the constructor will create objects for those variables that we just looked at up above. So we assign the primary stage that's created by the application object to our private variable stage. We'll create a new parent object of type border pane and we'll assign that to root. We create a new scene assigning the root to the scene. We create two new controls, a button and a label. And we'll add those to the border pane in the center and at the bottom and then we'll show the stage. Attach the scene to the stage. Run that. Now we will have a window with a button in the middle and a label at the bottom that you really can't see at this point because there's no content. Just a couple of things at this point. I forgot to set the title on the stage. And I'll add an event handler to the button using the set on action method.
organize the imports using Control Shift O. And then add the unimplemented method. And to illustrate the event handler, when the button is pushed, I'm going to add some text to the label. Let's, oh. And let's run that. Here we have the new title. We click on the button and we see button clicked. In a lot of cases, the set on action is, is all you'd ever need for a button event handler but it's only a convenience method. Event handling in JavaFX consists of two distinct phases. One is the capture phase and the other is the bubbling phase. And there are two separate types of event handlers that are used and the difference between the two depends on which phase they're executed in. There is the event filter which is executed in the event capture phase and then there is the event handler which is executed in the event bubbling phase. When an event is generated, in our case by clicking on the button, an event dispatch chain is created. And the dispatch chain is simply the path from the stage to the source of the event, or the button. The event dispatch chain for the button would be from the stage to the scene to the border pane to the button during the event capture phase. During the event handler phase, it's completely the reverse. The chain goes from the button to the border pane to the scene to the stage. During the event capture phase any node that has registered for the type of event that's being processed in terms of the button it's an action event the handler for that node will be executed. Let's look at adding an event filter and an event handler. Let's add both an event filter and an event handler to our root, which is the border pane, and we'll see how that reacts. method. Just do a little clean up. I forgot to add the type. For this one, I'm just going to add a couple of sysouts. And then we'll add the event handler. As you can see, the parameters for both the event filter and the event handler are the same. It's again just a question of when they are executed. Add the unimplemented method, which again is handle. I'm just going to do the cleanup. And a copy and paste of the sysout. Alright, so we have both the event handler and the event filter added. 
the event filter will be executed during the event capture phase, and the event handler will be executed during the event bubbling phase. So let's run this and see what happens. So now when we click on the button, we should get the event filter followed by the event handler. Again, the event filter executed during the event capture phase, and the event handler executed during the event bubbling phase. One last thing that I'd like to say about this is that at any point during the processing of an event, that is to say in any event handler or event filter, the event can be consumed and thereby prevent any other registered nodes from processing the event. So let's quickly show that. In the event filter, I'm going to do event.consume. We'll run it again. And now when the event filter is processed, it also consumes the event. Therefore, the event handler will no longer process that event. So let's click on the button and we get the event filter, but no event handler. Feel free to leave any comments or questions in the area below. And if you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Take care and we'll see you next time.